multi-step equations. You probably won't ever face one that has this many steps to it, but I went overboard just to prove a point. This process is not any different from the process you would use if you were solving something like this. If you can solve this, you can solve that. If you can solve this, you can solve that. If you can solve this, you can solve that. It's just more steps got added, but the process is, is the same no matter what. So basically, the key to being able to solve a complicated long equation, if you only have one variable in one spot, is to know that we start at the variable. Tell the story of the variable. If I start there, following order of operations, what happens to my variable? Okay, parentheses first. So inside this parenthesis, the first thing that happens to my variable is minus 7. Then, what happens to my x minus 7? Well, We've got two operations connected to it. Multiplication comes before addition, so multiplication and then addition. Now what happens to my block here? I'm dividing by 6 and then subtracting 23. Divide by 6 and then subtract 23. Now I've got a big block, and what happens to this block? Two more operations, times 3, and then plus 14. Okay, that's everything that's happening to the x. All these steps. Minus 7 times 8 plus 20 divided by 6 minus 23 times 3. Plus 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 steps. Okay? And after all of those steps happen to x, this is where we end up. Negative 25. Now, if you want to find, if you want to find out what x is, if you want to get back to your starting point, you just need to backtrack. Opposite steps in the opposite order. I'm going to unwind this. Instead of minus 14, or instead of plus 14, I'm going to undo that. So, minus 14. And then instead of times 3, I'm going to undo that. Divide by 3. Instead of minus 23, we're going to undo that. Plus 23. Instead of divide by 6, we're going to undo that. Times 6. Minus 20. Divide by 8. Plus 7. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 steps. Opposite steps in the opposite order. Now, when you grab a calculator, you need to make sure you hit enter after every move because calculator is going to try to do order of operations. So starting at negative 25, you're going to hit minus 14, and then you're going to hit equals, negative 39. Then divide by 3, okay, answer divided by 3, enter. Negative 13. Then, plus 23. Answer. 10. Times 6. Answer. All right. The most difficult thing in this is to make sure that you keep track for where you are. Minus 20. Divide by 8. Plus 7.
I get 12. 12 as an answer. All right, x equals 12. Now, if I'm not sure of myself, if I think I might have made a mistake somewhere, in the long, somewhere along the line, beautiful thing about equations is you can always check your answer. You don't have to turn in a wrong answer ever, or at least you can know it's wrong before you turn it in if you are going to try to turn in a wrong answer. I'll just type all this in a calculator. This time, not step by step, but all at once. So I'm going to type 3, parenthesis, 8, another parenthesis, 12 minus 7, close that parenthesis, plus 20, close that parenthesis, ooh, ooh, I need it even one more set of parentheses to make my fraction. So divide by 6, subtract 23, now close my original parenthesis, plus 14, all that, enter. Negative 25 is what I'm supposed to get. Negative 25 is what I get when I put x in for, or when I put 12 in for x. Okay? Opposite steps, opposite order, key takeaways. Start at the variable, tell the story. What happens to the variable? What is the order of the things that happen to the variable? Then, starting at the finish, undo all of those steps using opposite operations and make sure that you're undoing in the opposite order. Last becomes first, first becomes last. Multi-step equations. Again, I must emphasize this only works, only works if you have one variable in one spot. As soon as we toss another variable into the mix somewhere, you got to do some other stuff first to get those variables collected to one spot.